So one really important thing that's happening is open source GPU. What do you think? Yeah, I think that is really one of the most important things that is happening right now. So far, we've always had problems when a new version of an OS came out or anything. The, the binary blobs provided by the vendors would just stop working or if we updated the tool chain, there would be unresolved symbols. And of course, uh, there was just no way to see if, uh, if the driver really does what it's supposed to do instead of spying on you. What do you think about closed GPU drivers? I think they are one of the biggest problems we are facing today and they need to go away. Fortunately, th this is starting to happen at last. This is Rob Clark. Uh, he is currently working at Red Hat. He was working with Linaro earlier and he is primarily working on graphics drivers, including solving this problem. So, hello. So, um, you, you did free Duino. Uh, yeah, and I mean, we've gotten contributors from other folks in the Mesa community, but uh, yeah. Uh, my Does it work? Project. <laughs> is this is this it? So this is a, a Dragon Board 410C. Uh, it's actually uh, Barrow's running some builds on it. But uh, we've you also got, have 3D stuff there. We've got 3D. We've got builds running on it. Um, how how good does it work? So far, it works really well. I haven't seen any problems with it on the regular Linux world. On the Android side, uh, we still have to uh, solve a couple of problems, but it's getting there as well. So, uh, what have you been doing this week? Lots of things. So, there have been lots of interesting sessions, and of yeah. course, uh, we have had uh, lots of fun hacking on the Dragon Board 410C, uh, which we just got uh, this week. Can you show and stuff over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is this? So this is uh, actually for Drino uh, under running the Android. So it's on the board there? Uh, this one's actually on the uh, IFC. Over there? So this is a... Um, so this is a relatively recent thing. We've had a... Um, Google Summer of Code student who's been adding uh, Android support for Fedrino. Google uh, Summer of Code student? Yeah. Which, which guy? Um, uh, Varad. Is so, he here? Uh, no, he's not here, not sorry, here. unfortunately. So, uh, um, this, is, this is Android with open source GPU. Is it a big so, deal? Yes, it's one of the biggest deals because, as far as I know, uh, there's no other build uh, so far that can get by without any binary blobs. And I hope this is just the first of many. So yeah, not just that, I mean, open source drivers and also a mainline 4.2 kernel, uh, which is something you don't find on uh, other Android uh, builds either. No more blobs. Yep. Really? No more blobs? No more user space GL blobs, no. All right. Yeah, there are still a couple of firmware blobs that we need to co uh, copy to the GPU, but they are not running on the CPU, so they are not as dangerous as the regular blobs we used before. What do they do, those blobs? Uh, they're, I mean, it's a, like many uh, GPUs. They got, um, the GPU has a command processor inside it, um, sort of like the AMD or uh, Intel or other GPUs. There's a firmware piece. So could you use it a little bit? Is it smooth? Uh, reasonably. It's not, it's, um, it's uh, mostly, uh, sorry, the mouse is a little touchy. Um, it's mostly in a fairly, uh, how do you say, early stage. Um, <laughs> so, uh, All right. Clock. Is it running Android 7.0? Which one is it? What, what's uh, going on here? This is Lollipop. Lollipop. Yeah. All right. But, what? Um, yeah, it's not, we're not using uh, hardware overlays or anything yet. It's basically just barely working. You know, we've just got it working yet recently. So if we have an open source GPU, what's next? Next is uh, porting this driver to some more devices. Like the two guys you see behind the demo are right. currently uh, working on getting it to work on the Dragon Boat 410. So, so how, ma how long time do you need to, to make it work? I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea? <laughs> I have just no what's, idea. What's happening right now? We are trying to figure out where is the uh, system partition. And once we do that, we have the images ready. We just are trying to figure out how the, um, which partition, where does the system partition go. All right, that's cool. All right, so uh, when you have an open source GPU, can you just accelerate stuff like crazy maybe in the future? Like people can use this and do OpenCL stuff. What can they do? Um, we don't have compute yet. That's on hopefully soon. On the, it's one of the things we're working on. Um, 
I mean, the first thing is we've got just you know regular graphics. We have um, GLES 3 support and desktop GL uh, 2.0 so far, but hopefully 3 in the future. Um, All right. So how about Vulkan? Someday. Someday. Um, I mean, well, first we'll need apps that actually uh, use Vulkan, I suppose. But. Have you seen the GPU driver code before? Yes. I mean, I've looked at the Freetrino project, obviously, and I've also looked at Intel drivers and AMD drivers in the desktop world. But uh, I'm not primarily a driver developer. I'm uh, more of a user land developer working on system optimizations overall. So what do you think about the code? Does it look good? Yes. Looks I mean, good. <laughs> probably it contains some uh, hacks that uh, should be solved, but uh, it works and overall the code base looks pretty good. <laughs> Where can people find it? Um, upstream Mesa. So, so they can go and look and submit yep, crazy it's all, ideas? It's all on freedesktop.org. Uh, How many same place as the desktop, you know, Intel, Nouveau, uh, Radeon drivers. What could people potentially uh, submit now, from now on? What could happen in the future? New features, bug fixes. I mean, there's still um, still things to do. You know, optimizations, everything. All right. C can you talk about what's going on over there? Let's go over there. Yeah. So what is this? So over there, uh, essentially, uh, we are building AOSP, and the toolchain needed to build AOSP at the moment. Yeah, at the moment, the build is uh, stuck on GCC. Mm. The interesting thing is, for the first time, we are not doing that on Intel hardware, but on ARC64 hardware. It's running right on this uh, 96 board. It's going to take a while but, uh, to finish because the uh, storage is limited to an SD card, and SD cards are nowhere near the speed of hard disks. But the point of this is to make sure that we can do it uh, by the time the Enterprise Edition 96 box come out. So the software stack will be ready and once the hardware is there, we can start replacing x86 hardware as built machines. Nice, so this, this one it says right here, who needs x86? Everything is done on ARM right now. Yeah. And if you had we some faster... Have to fix a couple of minor things in the build system but, uh, that can't require manual intervention during the build, but probably by the time the Enterprise Edition 96 bots are coming out, to, uh, we'll have those all sorted out. So if you out. just have faster storage, faster RAM, you could do it as fast as x86? Probably. I mean... On, on the right device. <laughs> yeah. On the right device. <laughs> so faster, better, stronger, everything's cool. And what, each, what, what does that mean there? Linaro AOSP improvements? What is that? Yeah, so Linaro announced on Monday that a new, uh, new member is joining. This is the mobile phone company Tino. Yeah. And we got one of their sample phones. This is a low end. This is a lower end device that is uh, working pretty well but still cheap. Is it MediaTek? Yes, it uses a MediaTek chipset. And over the week, uh, we worked on the code base a little, added some of the Linaro optimizations. And overall, we drove the Antonio score up from around 20,000 to around 21,000. So within uh, two or three days, you did 5% jump in performance already? Yeah, obviously the 5% jump is not just the result of uh, working on it for a couple of days, but uh, it's porting optimizations we've had before on other devices into this one. But it shows that the optimizations actually work in the real world and not just on uh, sample boards that were designed to, uh, to uh, do that sort of thing. So are you having fun here in Denaro? Do you have a fun week? Oh, yeah, yeah. Busy? As always, yes. <laughs> and the uh, next six months, what's going to happen? Oh. Um, <laughs> more feature development. Uh, a lot of things. I mean, I guess it. Uh... What do you think is going to happen next six months? So, obviously, we are going to get more features. We are going to see the release of Android 6 probably. And uh, Linaro will be busy uh, moving to the newer version, optimizing it further, bringing it to a new 96 boards, uh, where we are probably going to see the, the next three or four boards, including the first Enterprise Edition board that will be useful for actually building stuff. 
Are you going to be able to take Android M and double the speed? Doubling the speed is probably hitting a little too high, but probably we can do some stuff to optimize it. You can do some stuff? You can use free Adreno already? Hopefully. That'd be Hopefully. Nice. Yeah, pretty sure that's going to happen. I mean, getting rid of binary only stuff is always one of our first priorities. So uh, today is 25th of uh, September. Do you have the new Nexus? I hope to get it when it's actually out. This like it's just you're leaving tomorrow or soon, right? Yes. So you're leaving just before it's released. We don't know that. We don't know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that means uh, that means Android 6 software or source code is going to be released at the same time, right? Yeah. If history is any indication, yes. But some certain hackers might have the source code already, right? We're not. We Possibly. don't have to blink or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously people inside Google share it with some partners, so probably some of the hardware makers who have been here have access to the code. And it might even be finished, it might not be, the, but it's definitely not too far away. I'm running the latest preview build on my Nexus 6 and that's working really well, so the final release can't be far away. Cool. How soon in the future are you going to be able to do all your work on an ARM laptop? Depends on when someone makes one. <laughs> yeah, so actually I've been thinking about this a bit and I think it's a little annoying that the arm is starting to move on the server side and is always on the embedded side but the entire middle thing is kind of left out. And with the 96 boards availability and the, uh, them essentially becoming a viable platform to run Linux on, I think it would be interesting to just build a laptop case, put in a huge battery, uh, put in a nice display, keyboard and touchpad, and then instead of putting in a regular x86 mainboard, put in a slot that will take any of the 96 boards. That'd be awesome. So there it is, uh, right here. Uh, it could be like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably the first version would be somewhat bigger because it would have to fi uh, fit a bigger battery and the entire internal wiring would probably be thicker because the 96 boards are really designed to have external ports. It would be at least thick enough to fit, uh, fit the HDMI port and the USB ports and everything. But something like this would be nice to have. Are we going to get a 96 core, 96 board? That would be great, but I think that's at least a year or two away. Okay, but maybe somebody can just speed up and just release it sooner, no? Yeah, It would be great. I mean, you can just make some phone calls. The specification of the 96 bots is open, so if anyone interested in doing it is watching this, go ahead. And if the price isn't insane, I'll be your first customer. They have your approval, right? Of course. Yeah. The specifications are open, so just go ahead and use them. And anybody doing some awesome stuff should just send you samples. You'll be happy to play with them, right? Of course. Of course. <laughs> All right.